Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 3 through 5 of Yenshi Palace. Ying Luo has just been told off for inadvertently causing the death of Yi, but rather than making her regret her choice, Ying Luo's rather pissed at the whole situation and what could have been. She's taking her anger out on a tree when the emperor pulls up. Bad luck for her, it's a special, blessed tree, and hurting it in any way constitutes a crime. The emperor originally plans to have her flogged, but she very quickly comes up with an excuse. She says she had a dream the night before, and the tree told her it was itchy. She was simply helping it relieve an itch. The emperor lets it go and continues on his way to see the Empress Dowager. <laughs> the emperor and the Empress Dowager are super cute. They've got more of a normal mother and son relationship than any of the other emperor Empress Dowager pairings I've seen so far. Sure. She encourages him to visit the harem more, but he very obviously doesn't intend to. <laughs> on his way back, the emperor thinks things over again and realizes he's been tricked. After all, who is that lowly maid to be visited in her dreams by the holy tree spirit? He goes back to the tree hoping to find Yinglo, but she's long gone. He orders his eunuch to find her for him. We find out that the empress never barred Yu from entering her palace. It was that maid of hers acting independently as, she says, for her own good. She was worried about the conflict harming the empress, and to me, that seems like a serious breach of rules that should be severely punished. I mean, seriously, who are you to make those kinds of decisions for the empress? If you then killed herself and the last thing that happened was her being barred from seeing the Empress, what then? The Empress is clearly pissed, but before they can really get into it, the Emperor arrives and she has to calm down. The Empress lies and says the spat was about something else, and it's over and done with, so yeah, no reason to cause more of a mess, I guess, but I am officially not on Team Mingyu. Gao has to transcribe a book as punishment for so publicly embarrassing Yi, but other than that, gets off scot-free. The punishment was set by the Emperor, so obviously he's not happy with what she did. But Gao hits the nail on the head when she says he won't get too involved so as not to make the Empress look completely useless. As the maids are heading to the laundry area, a guard recognizes Ying Luo and drags her away. One of the other seamstresses, Ling Long, sees this and immediately goes to tell a head maid. Unfortunately, this is Fang Momo, not the one who likes her, Zhang Momo. The guard is Qing Shi, who was previously in a relationship with Ying Luo's sister, and thus knows exactly why she's here. He tries to warn her not to investigate her sister's death. Ying Luo tells him that he abandoned her sister in the end, and in fact thinks he was never serious about marrying her because her family is from a lower banner class than his family is. In any case, Ying Luo says they are now strangers with no right to instruct each other on how to live their lives. Before they can talk more, Feng Momo shows up convinced that she's going to find Ying Luo and this mystery guard in the throes of passion. She forces her way in and Ying Luo covers her head while Qing Shi speeds off like Sonic. She then proceeds to beat her with a stick. When the other maids show up, Ying Luo feigns ignorance and says she thought she was being spied on by a pervert. It's obviously a lie, but with no evidence to the contrary and a busted back, the head maid has no choice but to head back, though it's clear she won't forget this. As Feng leaves, Ying Luo finds a Lao Tzu she dropped on the ground, recognizing it as one of her sisters. When Ying Luo returns it, she asks about where it came from and finds out it was made by A Man, which must have been the name Ying Ning was going by. The story going around is that A Man did something wrong and was kicked out of the palace. All of this is somehow related to Feng, who Ying Luo has unfortunately just made an enemy of. Two of the new picks from the concubine selection ceremony come to the embroidery department to check on their dresses, noble lady Shu and first class female attendant Ching. They spot Ying Luo and remember her helping the girl with her shoe in episode 1. They were friends, apparently, and blame Ying Luo for getting her kicked out of the selection. Ying Luo plays it innocent. Since they can't really be sure she did anything on purpose, they let it go. But there's another person on the I've got my eye on you list. Qing has no personality to speak of yet, but can I say I actually find Shu very cute. The Emperor's eunuch Li Yu has been working hard to find the mystery maid who dared attack the spirit tree. I don't know what kind of super hearing he must have to still be able to remember Ying Luo's voice, but if you say so... He finally arrives at the embroidery department and has every girl repeat the line like a perp voice lineup. With some finagling, Zhang manages to sneak Ying Luo off before her turn is up. And again, Zhang seems so dedicated to keeping Ying Luo out of trouble. Hmm... Finally, we meet our eye candy for this show, the Empress's brother Fu Cha Fu Hong. The girls are obsessed. <laughs> Ji Shang tries to get his attention with some incredibly bad acting, but before he can trample all over her, because I, I really don't think he would have stopped, Ying Lo snatches her up and sets her straight. I'm not judging Ji Shang here though, I mean Ying Lo's right, but also she's just trying to get the attention of some guy she has a crush on. 
Fu Hong, it turns out, was eavesdropping on their conversation and later confronts Ying Luo, telling her not to look down on men, as if he'd ever have a tryst with a palace maid and get her in trouble. I love seeing Ying Luo saying whatever nonsense she needs to get out of trouble, but hey, dude, why do you care? And was that an I'm smitten smile? It's been three seconds! Fu Hong then goes to the Empress's chamber and sees her sighing over a trinket from her dead son. Clearly, this isn't the first time. Exasperated, he snatches it from her hand and tosses it out. It's rough watching the Empress looking so desperately for her son's lock, and Fu Hong looks a bit cold, but after three years, I mean, I guess the soft approach wasn't working. It's apparent that the Empress can't move on and rather blames the Emperor for moving on so quickly. And of course, it would hurt watching your husband move on just a few days after the death of your son. But also, maybe he would also like to shut himself off and grieve on his own, but he's being responsible in fulfilling his duties, which you are not. That's what her family wants to tell her. They want her to move on because their political standing is not stable, so not that they don't love her, but they're not entirely pure-hearted in this. It's complicated, and there isn't really a wrong side in this, which is just the kind of conflict I love. Fu Hong can't get her to see reason, so he enlists the help of her childhood friend consort Chun, who very cleverly and efficiently uses a maid to get the Empress to see how her actions have been affecting everyone else. The maid turned 25 a year ago, the age at which maids are allowed to leave the palace and start their lives, but because the Empress has been so depressed, the maid couldn't bring herself to bring it up to the Empress, and her fiancé, tired of waiting, wants to marry someone else. The Empress gets the message. So much of the palace relies on her that, intentional or not, she's literally hurting the people around her by being like this. And to be clear, I truly don't mean to blame her. I can't imagine how much it hurts to lose a child. But I'm so, so thankful she was able to see the light. As one final push, the Empress finds out that the Emperor had already set the second prince as the crown prince before his death. Their son meant the world to him, too. The next day, the Empress is back on her shit. I cannot tell you how much I love this scene. She is a force to behold. Right off the bat, she doesn't let Gao get away with her usual nonsense. She pretty much tells everyone, I know I've been gone, but I'm back and there are going to be some changes. My favorite moment is when she decrees that Yi died of an illness and as such will be granted a proper funeral. Gao pushes back, saying it was clearly suicide. Love, love, love that. The Empress must have been an absolute doormat for Gao to have become as audacious as she has, but she's ready to right that wrong, much to the chagrin of Gao and her little lapdog, Imperial Concubine Jia. Just to flesh out our ranks a little, we have the Empress and then Gao as the next most highly ranked. Then the consorts Shen and Chun. Shen has no allies or enemies it seems, while Chun allies herself with the Empress, though she stays out of most harem politics. Jia is an Imperial Concubine and like I said, is Gao's lapdog. Yi was also an Imperial Concubine, but she killed herself. Well, no, she died of an illness. Yu, the pregnant one, is a noble lady, as is Shu, the most recent addition who entered with her tall and cowardly friend, Qing Changzai. There are more, but they have yet to enter the story, so I'll hold off for now. Back to the servants. Yinglo's annoying co-worker Linglong goes from a mild annoyance to an actual threat. She fake accidentally tells Gao's head maid that Yinglo is responsible for you getting the idea about the poisonous loquat leaves. It's clear that she's become bitterly jealous of Yinglo being better at everything, and I guess I get it, but this much? If Gao really feels like Yinglo is going to get her caught, I mean, that's death for Yinglo. Not to mention, there's a thread that leads back to you. Who's to say Gao won't want to clean up the whole chain and get you next? It's bitterness to the point of insanity. Gao's maid comes to the embroidery department to pick Ying Luo up for a special assignment. Ying Luo's senses are sharp, though. As soon as she's brought in to see Gao, she puts on an act, pretending to be a loudmouthed silly girl. She makes it seem as if the loquat thing was just her spouting off nonsense and not any kind of deliberate scheming. Gao is fooled, but Jia clearly knows a thing or two about scheming in the palace. 
very sharp. And this is just what Zhang has been trying to protect her from. As intelligent as Yinglo is, all it takes is a concubine deciding she doesn't want you around and your life is pretty much over. Yinglo makes her way home, luckily with her head still intact, but Linglong is definitely not long for this world. The mystery this drama is wrapped around is just so good. I'm loving how we're putting it together piece by piece along with Yinglo. What more can you ask for from a main lead? She's great to watch, smart and capable. The only complaint I could see is maybe she's too perfect? But I don't know, it's working for me. Well, in every aspect except Fu Hung. I just don't think you can establish a character this aloof and then have him immediately be this into Yinglo after three seconds of conversation. I mean, seriously, why does he suddenly care what some random maid's opinion towards men is? He certainly shouldn't care enough to stick around, eavesdrop, and then try to school her on why hashtag not all men. It just felt very fast and very, ah, do you see it? Look at the chemistry. I did like his interactions with his sister though. He clearly loves her very much. I also really like Chun. Very elegant way of getting the Empress to see the light. Fu Hang was obviously right to come to her. And the Empress. I love that she was actually receptive to the message. She so quickly saw the problems she was causing and immediately set out to fix things, which kind of makes me wonder why they didn't try this earlier. But anyway, this must have been what she was like before losing her son because she so quickly got back on the horse. She was fabulous in that morning meeting scene, just perfect. Gal needed to be reminded who really runs the harem because she seems to have forgotten. Till next time, thanks for watching.